back to game five of SK Telecom T1 versus Misfits and the beautiful Guangzhou, China. Ladies and gentlemen, our second quarterfinal game going to five here and Misfits taking SKT to five. Not something that's happened in their history at, like quite often, can't say at all. It's happened about three times, but... It's definitely happened before, but a, a Western team doing worlds, pushing SKT all the way to game five yeah. is amazing. They have still not lost the best of five doing the world's bracket stages, and they've definitely not lost the game to a Western team, that's for sure. And they've definitely never even been close in the quarterfinals this early in the tournament to actually dropping out. It always feels like those amazing series are in the semifinals against Rocks or you know finals against Samsung, something that has been built up to and is expected. This is not a team that was supposed to be challenging SKT, and yet here we are in yeah. game five with Jab predicting they're going to win. People are starting to believe. The second seed from Europe coming into the group stages. A lot of people predicted him to not get out of that group. They take down TSM in a tiebreaker. They did not even get first place in group D. They had to settle for second, and then they draw SKT. And these guys said, great, we want SKT. We're seeing weaknesses we can exploit, especially in the early game. Game two showed that, game three showed it as well. Now game four was a lot more standard, it was a lot slower, and yet Misfits was able to challenge and get all the way down to SKT's base. Sadly, could not finish it. And Misfits now is on the red side, so they don't have the ability as SKT to try to save that support counter pick, to try to answer something crazy that could be coming out of Ignar. So Ignar could save his pick for last could try to base that on what Wolf has already selected and really exploit them in the bottom lane. Now we still want to see the Galio ban here from Misfit's side. They do not need to ban the Lulu. As we've already seen, they can give that over and counter pick against it with the more aggressive supports. That's the Galio one. I think the Zaya ban is also great against Hansama. Tristana first pick might actually be a thing here. I also think that this should be a, a Janna ban. I don't think that you want to give over Janna like you can with Lulu. Yes, that leaves Jace up, but when you talk about explosive engage and playmaking, Janna shuts that yep. down better than anyone. So even though they are potentially giving over a Jace, that's much more manageable. So I would look at Tristana here because there's still Javan and Sejuani you can trade back and forth. You don't necessarily have to instant lock one of your junglers. And we get the takeaway once again. Does make a lot of sense. We could see, though, Sejuani and Jarvan both taken here from Misfits. That would be showing your top end jungle early on. But yeah. And blind pick Jarvan is very scary. Huni can just lock in a carry top laner and destroy Alfari up in that top lane, especially in the late game where Jarvan can't really do anything in return. Yeah, we'd have to see, but he did play that matchup into the Jace already earlier today and, and did fine. You know, he was down in farm, but then the lane swaps coming out of, of Misfits were able to actually answer that. So it may be something that they're comfortable with, even if it's just to try to deny your opponents from getting the Jarvan themselves. So obviously the problem is if you give the Jarvan over and you pick Sivir yourself, you have that same situation as last game yep. where you have a an AD carry that can't get out of a Jarvan ult and it makes it very hard to play team fights. Oh. They go for the Varus. This is again for laning phase on the side of Misfits. You can pair the Varus with a very aggressive support like Blitzcrank or Thresh, and there's a lot of kill pressure. It is interesting and also kind of prioritizing the first round counter pick more than actually grabbing something that would have been a contested pick, right? Because SKT already had their AD carry. Grabbing your AD carry here, all it allows you to do is to try to get a preferential matchup and then get a second counter pick later. Because we could see Alfari now select his pick of the litter before the second round of bans and say, hey, what do you want to play into that Jace? You get counter pick. And again, Javan will still be good here against the Varus. It's fantastic in the late game against this AD carry here who wants to stand still and just auto attack. Have to always respect the engage then from a Javan. So I think it's still a smart takeaway, but they're so afraid of a potential crazy support pick now coming in. Or even Misfits just saving support for later, and they can still grab a mid laner here. Yeah, they could grab a mid laner, but you could also grab something like a Gnar if you want to use that to answer into a Jace, someone who's perhaps not going to be bullied as heavily. Last pick here for Power of Evil coming in. Maybe that Rakan to make sure Ignar has a way in and a way out with his kit. Four seconds left on that as both teams using their allotted time all the way to zero. There we go. Thresh gets locked in. Yeah, wait, is this standard meta now? What's happening? That doesn't seem right. We get the Thresh instead. Ignore, as we talked about, pair that with a Faros and you have a very strong 2v2 lane. 
And some of the power of actually grabbing this in the first round is you can now ban away a couple potential supports that would be strong into it. You know, things, if we're in North America, I'd be talking about Morgana, but I'm not expecting that from Wolf. I'm expecting more bans on things like Braum and perhaps even something like an Alistar. There's also Tom Kench to consider, even though no one has actually been playing it lately, but it can deny some of the kill pressure. Yeah. And Tom Kench, I think, would actually make a lot of sense. It's also good in the set 20. You can actually eat them out of the ultimate. But we have to see, A, where the bans go, and B, what kind of strategy SKT is comfortable playing. Because while there are these niche picks, it's things that Wolf very likely has not practiced in a long time. I mean, take away the Arden Sensor mid laner from Misfits right there. We know the Thresh was locked in early because it's been banned by SKT in the last few games in this second phase. And they really trust Ignar on this champion. They want him to carry game five. Bans coming through. That Thresh was on the ban list in phase two quite a lot for SK Telecom T1. So Misfits did not give it to Ignar. Now he has it in there focusing a quite, bot, uh, quite a few bot lane. Yeah, so Braum is going to get taken away. We do still see Rakan available, though. So while this can be a good matchup, if Wolf is confident enough, he could go into that. You know, he has the ability to just go for something like the Rakan. You end up with a very standard meta type composition, and then it would be up to Ignar to outplay it. And I think that if you're going full early game, commit to that. Use the playmaking of the Shen. Allow yourself to get into dives. Already, I don't think you want to go into a late game fight, you know, without an Iron Sense or without this sort of comp. So There's that Tom Ken. Oh, I think it's super smart. I think. Yeah, it, it would be so good to try and prevent this bot lane from just dying over and over. I mean, it stops Shentan, it stops the Thresh Hook, it stops. There it is. The Sejuani ultimate as well. Like, this is so smart from SKT, and I love that they're going for the pick, despite the fact that we've not seen it in a long time. It is something Wolf has played many times in the past. Final pick here for SKT. They're going to show what Faker will be playing in the mid lane here in game five of their quarterfinal match versus Misfits. A tried and true rise, continuously locked in for Faker, and he switches Ooh. over to Talia with just a few seconds left. I mean, there's an opportunity here for Power of Evil. Talia does have some matchups which can be pretty risky to play into, and this is P Power of Evil's chance to actually counterpick. There's not been a lot of mid lane focus whatsoever, and we could go for something like Illusion if he wanted to play aggressively right. into it. There's also the opportunity for a Syndra, which can bully this pretty well, too. And LeBlanc as well, if you want to try and create kill pressure around the mid lane. But again, you got to respect the fact that Jarvan can hop around so often. How we will, though, feeling confident in his Syndra in this matchup here. One of the things to note with this matchup now, ever since Talia actually had her mana cost increased, it became very difficult to actually rush a Banshee's Veil, which is why you used to be able to blind pick to Leah because right. you didn't need the extra mana from something like a lost chapter or you know Relonomicon. So this is gonna be much harder for Faker. If he goes for the defensive route and tries to get some early MR, there's the ability to get burst down so much more easily or you know if, if you're not getting them Relonomicon, I you're not gonna be able to have enough mana to clear out the waves. Uh, very well rounded comp still for Misfits, even with this Tom Kench coming in to try and counter it, because it does mean there's just no art sensor for for either of the teams and Late game, you still have double tank with Shin and Sejuani in the front, and Syndra's late game damage on five to six items is something you have to respect, especially when you have Jace, Talia, and Tristana. None of them are super tanky in the late game. It's up to Wolf, though, with that Devour to just save every single member on his team. It certainly is, and also up to Faker to get out to the side lanes to be able to punish any potential over-aggression coming out of Misfits, because Jace against Shen in the early game is going to be tough for that Shen, and if Talia can get up there, if they can affect that lane and really start to snowball it, that's such a strong way into the game for SKT. We'll have to pay attention to Misfits as well. They've been great at picking targets, but now they have to choose very carefully, as we were saying, with Wolf on that Tom Kench. As the tournament continues to ramp up, you can add to the prize pool still and donate to charity by picking up the championship Ash and Ward skin in the store today. Already had a Baron steal earlier in the game. So we got a little bit of advance there on the esports and legendary skins. Pretty almost, nice. almost had a penta kill. Almost had a penta kill. Quadra kill coming in for Bang on this Tristan Ooh. that they have been continuously taking away in picks and bans to kind of throw Han Sama off. Here now he's on the Varus and the team is towards the top side. This is five top. They have not shown anything like this so far. They're trying to get around behind Huni, perhaps sneak into the bush. You push him out and then. You could allow him the chance to kind of come back over, see if they can bait him in, but it seems like they're already calling it off. 
And Huni sees a random Shen charge towards him. Probably says, hmm. You seem confident. Yeah, he's probably more <laughs> behind you at the moment and ends up just backing away. And Misfits realizes nothing's going to happen here. Everyone ends up going back. So no deep wards being placed by either team just yet. No huge advantage from the level one. We need to look towards bot lane once again, though, for Misfits. They've utilized Max Law to help them play around the lane as a jungler and then used Ignar's fantastic performance today to just create picks against SKT. And if you have your jungler there, what you can do is you can just switch your target to the Tom Kench itself and actually burn him down. Because in the early game, he is at least killable. The later you go into the game, the harder it gets. SKT looking to disrupt the level one, though they have some pretty strong champions here with Talia at level one with that Q with the Jace as well. Misfits is gonna have to handle this very, very carefully. Felt very comfortable doing this to Max Lorio and I was on Ivern. They still feel very comfortable doing it here with quite early game aggression. Looks like they're gonna try to steal this red out. Calling Afari from lane, he says, yeah, Booney's not there, we're gonna have to 2v2. Mike goes him. over, that's gonna be Blanks, and they're actually gonna get the fight onto Huni. This may have to be a flash out for him. Flag and drag misses out. Fari visions there. A kill onto Alfari. First blood to Huni. I mean, that is just way too much from Misfits. You're going a level one taunt, but then where is the follow-up damage supposed to come out through when you're going up against a level two red buff Jarvan? Bad call from Misfits. And now look at the mid lane. Vincent oh, Reed nice. Saw that last time. Beautiful scatter of the week. But also the fact that Blank just had the red buff in the brush right there. There was yeah. no ward able to be placed by Misfits because both the wards were on cooldown. And then obviously Blank is going to just smite it away. A little bit over aggressive from Misfits there. Feeling they had to try and defend. Yeah, and, and now you're putting Shen into a lane. We talked about how hard it is in the early game. If you get put behind like this, he's starting down his teleport, down his flash against the first blood Jace with level one taunt. That is a horrible lane to be going into. Happy birthday, Alfari. Happy birthday. Happy birthday right there. <laughs> Pull the hat over his head and make it a little more difficult for that laning phase. Huni also likes to go for the tier on his Jace build. We'll be able to get that a lot earlier. He's already sitting on 800 gold with that kill and big damage to Faker's Power of Evil says we need to take control. And that's what Hansama and Ignar say as well over and over in lane. But now SKT, they know that Maxwell wants to just farm. He has no red buff. He wants to just catch up in experience. He's not really going to be on the map early. So there's some safety. Huni playing very aggressive up in the top lane instantly. And just go place his ward now in this tri bush, and he should be able to spot Max Law. And I like aggressive buys like this from Huni when you have the early game advantage. You know, skip the tier, at least for yeah. now. Double Doran's played plus the boots. A lot of combat power here for him up against the Shen, who never got the chance to actually buy. So Alfari's going to be stuck in this lane likely without items for quite some time. This is Bloom just catching Blank on the way up as he takes the Scuttle Crab, and Alfari knows he's got some trouble towards that top lane. It's going to be pressure from Booney uh, to the turret as well, so Maxlor may not be able to come up here and defend his jungle. Well, he's on his way now to check if anything is happening and prevent any sort of tower dive. Can't afford Alfari dying again up in this lane here. Flag and drag. Smite coming out from Alfari secures that big frog, but it looks like with the lane pushed, Huni is going to be able to help with this aggression in the jungle. He needs to level up up right now. Alfari just hit level four himself. Plus, Blank has the red buff, so certainly the 2v2 you would expect to go heavily in SKT's favor. Woo. Getting the auto attacks in very quick. Huni's in on just a little bit of mana. Still get that extra damage out of his stance change. And he keeps Alfari to the turret as well making this difficult for him to farm. Grabbing the Siege, not doing too bad for himself. The farm is still even. Yeah, Huni's actually not been getting a CS advantage up in this top one here. So Alfari is doing everything he can to just stay relevant and just wants to get level six. And that is the thing about Shen. You have to actually stop him from farming by zoning him off the CS because it's so easy to last hit under turret as this character. So it's more about harassing the champion and pushing him out of lane. Look around the mid lane, Blank trying again. Last time Power Weevil just knocked him away out of his own combo. Doing it nice. again. Oh, once again, you can see how Faker played as well. Oh. You hover towards the top side of that lane, you feel like there's going to be aggression from the other side, and Power of Evil kind of left himself in the middle for that. Just beautiful from Power of Evil. It is. No hesitation there. He gets the scatter of the week, doesn't blow any summoners, doesn't panic whatsoever, and then great sidestep on the seismic shove, and really impressive stuff here from him in the early game to absorb this pressure, because with the start to this game, you can't afford to then have your lanes dying. Exactly, so Maxlaw again, hoping he can just continue farming so he can hit his own level six. 
Right now contesting Vision, he's alone around this mid lane here, wants to try and defend this control ward so badly, but Power Weaver's in base, and he's on his way back to lane now. Yeah, and he's also gonna have to deal with the minions at the turret, he's never gonna walk by those. Maxlo are pushing in a little bit, and it looks like they'll just get Blink some trouble, he's fine. Oh, Maxlo on a mission. Right, Maxlo truly showing some dominance here, <laughs> actually ended up first von me doing force playing away, and now he has his mid laner back, and he can actually feel confident in here. And they did see Blank actually use his smite, so I think he wants to try to challenge this, but Blank had a second charge and Maxlor gonna be pushed out. See Ignar on your screen, chatting it out with the team, seeing what he can do. And we have that level 6 now for Fari. Very important part of the game. If Misfits can actually force any place on the bottom side, the problem is again, Tom can't just get to deny it. It's even harder to set up a tower dive. Because if you don't get on the time Kench himself, who then gets extra HP as well during the dive, you can't really kill the AD carry in time, and then suddenly you end up taking too many <laughs> tower shots. So everything just kind of gets slowed down by time Kench being in the game. Damage to Malfari almost in range of the turret was Huni. And with Lomana here, still Faker's going to come in. Huni maybe taking that first hit. Faker's going to actually be oh. on that damage as Alfari makes it out. Alfari actually sidestepped it. And yep. then he doubted himself. He was already out and then extended the flash. So got a little bit scared there. Really did not want to die. And it's understandable because when you TP back immediately, if you die with the wave pushed in, you lose so much experience. But still, he had outplayed it and should have trusted himself. A little bit of those nerves coming through, and he will. Have, as you said, that teleport down. If he chooses to leave, it's a long walk back to lane. And the question mark actually just coming from Blank towards that top side, saying, didn't quite know where Maxlor was, and then may have just seen him on that bit towards Blank. Max. It's going to be Huni backing as well. We'll see what items they come back to lane with. A tier for Huni. Yeah, Huni uh, really likes the tier here. Just aims for more late game. Uh, if you go tier, you kind of sacrifice a bit of your first 20 minutes of the game where you could be sitting on like a phage and a serrated dirt and you have a lot more damage but he values the late game where he wants a bigger mana pool both for poke and also potential all-ins where you do full rotations of your spells multiple times as a jace here Alfari though with his early buy is able to once again farm in this lane but he's constantly pushed on the tower also because Maxlor can't really have any pressure in this game, he's not been getting red buffs. The second one was stolen away by Blank as well, and he's not level 6 yet either. Faker, he's on the way back towards top. They can just go up and actually get some turret damage down because he already pushed in the mid lane. Just walk up here, start hitting the turret, but instead will go back to mid and just allow Huni to get the chip damage down that he can. This is looking pretty good for SKT so far in the early game. Double wards placed on the bot side. We haven't seen too much aggression from those bot laners. Mostly towards this top here, making sure Alfari's down. Even the shield, hopefully preventing that from doing too much damage if it were to come in for a bot lane gank. And Maxlor is going to start up this Infernal Drain. So with SKT once again putting their focus around Huni and the Jace pick, just like in game one, it does surrender the bottom side of the map. We know Hansama and now able to push in the bottom lane. And now Maxlor has got Infernal. Good trades from uh, Alfari once again. It's important. If he can actually get Huni low enough that Huni is afraid when it comes to hitting the tower, he delays the tower dying. But that's why Blank is here. Alfari's pretty healthy, though. I don't think they could actually go for this dive. Uh, Huni's relatively low. And man, Alfari looking pretty healthy. Does not have his flash, though. Ooh, actually just hit up, but he's out of mana. Alfari will try to decide or go back at blue buffs on the mid laner, so they will continue to fight. Alfari leaves just to be safe, and that's going to be a top turret for Huni. So Faker we'll is, uh, Faker's also trying to make sure that Power Weaver's not leaving the mid lane by walking forward and take some of these trades here. And even knowing there is a Shen ulti available, here's Maxlaw. Dodging out on the ultimate, feeling like it was just a little too quiet in the mid lane. Faker keeps himself alive. Honestly, I've got to say, I think that Alfari could have actually defended under that turret. I think he had enough health, and they don't have enough damage at this point with the tier Jace and you know, Cinder Hulk Jarvan to actually fully dive you under the turret. And, Giving that up, though, is going to mean so much for Huni. It unlocks him on the map. He gets solo first turret gold and really now is going to have a huge advantage. And there is a ton of, of pressure on Misfits at the moment. They go into this game here to get the Thresh for Ignar, but then to see a time Kendrick against it and not been able to make plays around the bottom lane. Not been as explosive as game two and game three. And now you just have Huni winning that top side, take down a tower, and some missed skill shots as well from Misfits. Certainly have been, and you also, anytime I see a Shen in a game, 
I feel like I have to talk about being proactive with the ultimate because that is the, really the key to success. If Shen is just sitting in the lane here and farming against the Jace, that's really not what you want. You want him out on the map, making use of this ultimate, making plays to get the other lanes ahead but he hasn't been able to do so just yet. Yeah, then Maxwell had to hit that ulti in mid lane to force a cleanse from Faker so they could return to mid lane, use the Shen ulti there on Power of Evil to try and kill Faker and get some damage on the mid tower. Or they try and five man the bottom lane, but again, it's hard because of Wolf sitting there with this defensive support. And Misfits have not been able to find an opening just yet. The rest of SKT are playing very safe, not risking anything. 2,000 gold already for SKT. Looks like they are not stopping the pressure down towards the bot side. Faker gets seen out for a moment. And Yara can already tell Misfits backing up. This is giving SKT so much information. Seeing Hansama and Ignar leave the lane so quickly, they know they have wards down there and SKT can start playing around this. And Faker has been doing a really good job just threatening these roams, even though he hasn't really been fully committing to them. Every time he pushes out the wave, he can just start walking down the river and Misfits have to respect the yep. fact that he could be on the way. And that discourages any sort of aggressive Got play. the cleanse. It's out of Faker, missed with the flash though, which means that could be a rinse and repeat here. Yeah, that was step number one here for Misfits. Now they need to see if they can regank this lane and actually kill Faker to get some pressure in the game. Honestly, you could try to commit with the Shen ultimate. If you can get down there, even a dive could be pretty possible. Uh, we'll see if they are going to look for it because you have to feel like they need to be forcing things. They need to be pushing this advantage that they've gotten with the summoner spells down on Faker. Also got a chuckle with Power of Evil for the SPT Syndra. Going up against Baker. Looks like Alfari and Huni are going to have a little back and forth as Huni changes stances just to get a bit more movement speed and head out of that situation. Everything's happening more towards the bot side of the map now, figuring out what's going to go down with these bot laners. Huni and Alfari have kind of been duking it out once this turret went down. Wolf also, after level 6 now, with his own ulti. If he's actually near the mid lane, he can easily move in and try and save Faker if a setup. It's being started here by Misfits. Finally, Maxlock gets a red buff for himself. Something else that we don't usually have to talk about, at least in this series we haven't had to, is actually the Moby Boost rush here from Ignar. And generally speaking, people are going much more you know, for kind of these greedy yep. builds. This is super early game. When you go Moby Boots, you're not getting any stats from that. You're not getting combat power in lane. You have to get out on the map and make use of it. And so far, Ignar has been kind of pinned down in his lane where, you know, Wolf got for the uh, upgraded early Targons, already has his Sight Stone, and he's going for more of kind of this defensive type build. We're actually getting a lane swap now for Misfits, despite the fact that top lane is not in a good position for them. Same for bot lane, where the wave is all the way near to the to their own turret here. But SKT are not going for any damage on it. They're actually moving straight towards mid, trying to make a play here. Missile Voyage, right? the top side of mid. It's going to be a shot back on the Power of Evil. He's going to take a lot of damage. Bang! Gets taken out. And it looks like Power of Evil stays alive on the backside. One more kill coming through, and that's going to be Blake as Misfits finally pressure the mid lane with the Abyss of Void. Yeah, that came out of nowhere. SKT were actually setting up a kill against Power of Evil, but then suddenly, bang, gets destroyed. Wolf was not there to save him, or at least wasn't ready for it. Those were two kills. Misfits were not even looking for. Yeah, I mean, when you engage into the Shen, then they don't have to be proactive. He's able to actually turn around the fight, the Lantern, and the Shen ultimate, keeping Power of Evil safe. And Misfits are gifted back a couple kills there by SKT. Exactly. This looked like a very slow grind in favor of SKT. And then suddenly, this play happens. Let's see. They want to go in behind Power of Evil, then knock him back with the Tristana. It's so aggressive what they're trying to do, but the Shen ulti comes down, and where's the Devourer from Wolf? Flashes, he actually queues first, so he can't flash Devourer on his AD carry because he value trying to get a bit of damage in, and then suddenly Bang dies. Wolf realized just a second too late. See how they continue to press on. They've closed the gold gap just a little bit. It was never that big for SKT, but usually a 2K gold lead at any time for SKT means they are going to take an arm and a leg after that. Misfits seemingly able to stop it here in the mid lane as SKT back out from base. And we do have to remember that this is a solid late game comp from Misfits. They don't have to win early. You know, we have been talking so much about them being proactive in the early game because that has been the way in to winning their first two games. But in the following game, in game number four, that was a long game. They played admirably in the mid and late game stages, and 
We'll see how well they can match up against SDC here. Yeah, the concern for, for Misfits is the fact that Huni will be winning the side lane split push all game long, especially also with the late game build he's going for. And then your four-man group with your jungle, your mid lane, your support, your AD carry, need to be able to engage on SKT to stop a split push from happening. But that's where it cleanses on Faker. That's where Tom Kench is there to devour whoever gets hit by Max Law's engage or the stun or the hook from Ignar. And that's kind of one of the problems for Misfits is it gets much harder to force as a four-man group. I'd say that creates so much of an onus on having good vision control, but they may be looking for Power of Evil. Voyage comes out, he's able to keep himself pretty safe. You can see the teleports coming in, but not quite finished here from Alfari. Nice timing on the ultimate there from Blank to actually dodge the scatter of the week this time around, but they can't get the kill. They do force out teleport from Alfari, but he almost has Stand United, so it's not the end of the world. Back and forth from lane to lane. Bang able to use this Tristana or the team, much like Misfits were. A, few, a bit of damage on the turret. Aggro in that lane, and then catch the rotation. And SKT is finding Misfits around the map here and there. Cloud Drake picked up by Blaine. All right, so it's pretty value the bottom side to get a Drake, meaning Rift Elf can get started by Misfits when all of it's clear back in base. This is a good trade for Misfits. They're happy with this one, surrendering just a single Drake for a very big objective for them. Maxlor picking it up this time. Usually on to Ignar. Looks like they will just get the quick push and safety for Power of Evil in the mid lane. Now looking to get some deep wards in. Misfits is ready to make this Rift Herald work. And looking to actually set up a pick. They know they have not been spotted. They have strong vision around this area. And you have the Sejuani ultimate to be followed up by the Thresh Hook and the Shen ultimate available. So they are looking to make a play here. Oh, as you see, they're pinging in there. They want to make sure no one actually gets caught out. Black comes in. Smart play by SKT, knowing they've lost the top side. And there's a high chance of Misfits hiding in that brush here. Bang, he needs to be careful in the side lane for himself. Tenth game, though. Game five, quarterfinals at Worlds. Second seed from Europe, Misfits against SKT. And this game, while it was a tough start, is still very close. And who would have thought an unlikely band of misfits able to make <laughs> this happen? Kind of even throw SKT off their own game and say, you know what? No art and sensors really this time. Let's do this. Okay, maybe of some course. art and sensors. Let's do that. I'm actually getting flash back towards <laughs> 2050 Are you with us? MSI, where Europe was considered by many a super weak region coming into MSI. It was Fnatic back then who took on SKT in the best of five, took it all the way to all five games. Five. They had their own way of playing the game as well. Very aggressive from the top side with Huni. That was the event where SKT went to the final and lost to EDG. Now we're seeing Misfits try and do exactly what Fnatic tried to do. Actually take down SKT in this best of five. And be the ones moving forward in the tournament and proving to everyone that Europe is a strong region. It's pretty interesting also to kind of track Alfari's build here. Generally speaking, I, I feel like it's a little bit atypical to see someone rush towards the Titanic Hydra in a matchup like this. Perhaps feels that if he can complete this item early on, he may actually be able to kind of stave off some of the split push aggression through actually more aggressive play. Because traditionally, you do see this only in more AP matchups where you have a Cowl rushing into Titanic. Yeah, I think uh, the fact he sees a tier on Huni makes him less scared of him right now and says, okay, I don't have to rush full defense. I can go for a bit of damage. B a lot stronger, 1v1 as well. And even in a team fight, if he's actually able to land the taunt, the damage from a Shen with the next three hits, pretty serious. Yeah, it is actually very, very good. And you can proc it a lot faster with the Titanic Hydra reset. But then the onus is on actually hitting the taunt, right? Yeah. And Jace can do a lot of things to actually stop this. You can sit in melee form and actually buffer your E anytime you think that they are going to be looking for those taunts. So we'll see how well Alfari is going to be able to navigate this. Quick talisman of ascension for Ignar. Eye of the Equinox finish off the wolf here as they are favoring the vision and they're favoring the movement of that abyssal voyage to get themselves into fights. And it looks like Huni still hanging out on the side lane. Just hang with no mana until he gets that aggression. But Alfari is backing right now, so he gets three times the turret. And this kind of the setup I talked about before where Huni will just sit in the side lane all the time. And it's on the other four members of Misfits to actually start a team fight. So Alfari has something he can ulti onto to get into the five on five but because they are relying on these single target skill shots to create picks they haven't been able to find the targets wolf is there faker with cleanse and as is sitting so far back on the map just 
waiting for Huni to win the side. And now the Baron is alive. And what you want to do against split push comps, if you can't find an easy engage, is start the Baron. And then you force SKT into five versus five team fights. Yeah, and at the very least, try to force out the teleport and disengage, right? If you can do that, you can buy yourself some time where Huni cannot be pressuring without the risk of you actually just committing and rushing down this Baron. But it still is fairly early. Uh, Titanic Hydra is complete. The Rage Blade is up, so they have some damage to actually try. And Wolf ruins everything for Misfit. <laughs> Looking for that engage, and then Devour comes in. I mean, that's Tom Kench in a nutshell. He just ruins things. He stops your engagement. Yeah. He shuts you down, and that's why you pick the champion. Everyone at home were complaining about Janna Lulu every single game. <laughs> well, Tom Kent is back. Enjoy the Devour. <laughs> so nice. We'll see how they continue to use it. And we'll see if Misfits can find a way around it. As I said, coming into the game, they're going to have to be very particular about the picks we saw, the Blitzcrank hitting, about the hits that Unleashed Power can kill. For Power of Evil, they're going to have to consider these great lines. Yeah, I would like to see Misfits try and just target Wolf specifically. If they are forcing an engage, just yeah. get it on to the time Kench to at least start the fight. But once again, Baron seems to be the objective they can bait around or this Infernal Drake spawning in 55 seconds. And while I certainly agree Wolf is kind of what you're left with targeting, he's not a great target. No, it feels he has, bad. As the Merc Treads with the thick skin, he's going to be actually fairly tanky. He's built into the Eye of the Equinox, so he's relatively tanky from that, getting the bonus HP as well, and it's going to be really tough. He's probably going to get a QSS later in the game as well, just in case they actually finally hit him. He can use that to then once again disengage so they can allow Huni to just win that side lane. Two items now completed. This is what he's waiting for on this chase when he builds the tier to continue to split pushing in the side lane. Merc treads across the board except for Bang, basically walking through a chain of corruption or any of these stuns that can hit the power of evil. A slight breeze, 23 minutes coming up on the clock, two to one. Still in favor of misfits and kills, but this is the SKT game they play where they'll avoid you and start to take control of the map. And it, even at two to one, we could see SKT on the inhibitor turrets. We might get a fight around this Infernal Drake here. Everyone is moving towards it. Power Beaver is not there yet. Misfits would really like to get their second here. Oh, Han Sama's already getting ulted in. Lantern, Dark Passage to safety. Ignar missing the hook as the Dragon had stepped out of the pit, so he's waiting for that cooldown to come back up. Scuttle Crab is going to go over to SKT, so they have a bit of that control as Power of Evil goes on to Faker, throws down everything he has to cleanse on the Scout of the Week, and he gets himself to safety. Well done there by the Misfits. They get their second Infernal, so 2-0, to zero, oh. big advantage. That's going to be a big deal if they can actually keep it close going forward into the late game said playing around each other finding who can get the biggest advantage in the fight and get out with using the least two infernal drakes now to misfits as we said and they can find themselves coming back out of base this however gives skt time to clear wards and place vision yeah now again the goal is this baron here there's no drake for a few minutes that's what you got to play around if you want to stop any sort of split pushing skt knows this they will try and get down all the defensive vision they can even getting the rift scuttler is good here to make sure they can see something in this river Two items on Power of Evil. His damage is something we have to look at in fights. If Wolf is not there to devour wh whoever he's actually trying to kill, he gets at least the person down to 20, 30% HP. First hook from Ignar. Second, he hit the dragon. Valid point. Gotcha. On to jump. <laughs> First hook on to jump. That's right. 25 minutes in here. And we are going to see Misfits trying to take control of that bot lane with Alfari. Oh, who has no flash? Han Sama towards the top, and with this split, Huni feels like he can go in, knowing there isn't too much more damage. I'm a little bit surprised to see Alfari actually going for a cowl here as well. I mean, if you are joining into a team fight, then yes, Faker is going to provide a lot of damage there, but mostly he's stuck in a side lane, and he's gone very light on armor for when you're considering he's going to be spending most of the game actually up against the Jace, and there's also still a, a very powerful Trishana right. here too, so I'm not really a fan of the item build. He needs to be able to hold his own in a 1v1 so they don't just bleed objectives, so they don't lose their inhibitor turret. So does mean that this lethality coming in for Huni is still pretty useful for him, even when he's hitting the Shen. Obviously, the Ghost Blade and Dusk Blade is what we're looking for next for the J. So in your team fights, when you join, your damage against all the squishies is amazing. Now there's no flash on Huni. Power Weaver's on the way to try and catch him. In case SKD start the Baron, then Alfari can still TP in. 
find him, looks for the slowest, he's going to Baron. Guarantee that scatter, flashes just over the taunt! Cooney gets himself in a position to possibly make a play, but there's still too much follow-up. This does give SKT time to look at Baron. But this is a really good play, because again, you still have your teleport on your Shen, so it's at worst a four versus four near the Baron. Great call here from Misfits to punish Huni for being over aggressive. Yeah, that buys them a lot of time. I mean, that's a pretty long death timer there for Huni. And how far he can get up, he can put some pressure on this turret, deny some of the minions as well. Misfits navigating themselves quite well in the latest stages of the game. And despite the small goal lead for SKT, with all the extra stats from the double infernal, you have to say it's pretty much dead even. It's gonna come down to execution in the next few fights. Han Sama is on the Vars. It's difficult to play team fights on this champion compared to things like a Tristana where you can peel for yourself. Your range is great. For Han Sama here, he needs to respect the fact that Blank can get onto him every time. It's also worth noting, Han Sama not playing with Warlords, no lifesteal in his build, no Ardent Sensor. So if he gets hit by any sort of poke, if you get shock blasted at the start of the fight, if you get hit by a rapid fire auto from the Tristana, it can be extremely hard to re-enter the fight because he has no way to sustain backup. Power of last cone over, puts everything on to Huni. 50 seconds until Huni's back. And now they're towards the top side here. Huni should be on the bottom side with his TP, but he tried to push out away. The they're starting it straight away. They know they can still turn. There is Sichuan, the ult from Max Law, and Ignor is there with the hook. Vision just on the outside of that pink ward. Another one placed in. Faker trying to get the damage down. Weaver's wall Here's cuts the off the Elan Ignar. They are on to Wolf first, and that means they'll be able to take him down. Wolf flashes to safety. Gets himself out with that exhaust as well. Oh, Misfits do not want to risk a 50-50 Baron, so they peel off instead of trying to finish it. They saw Blank around. We also had right there Ignar not in a position to interrupt the Javan if he tried to jump into the pit. Of course, Blank could always try and flash in there, so Misfits yep. trying to play it safe, still trusting in their own late game and not putting it all on this Baron. And why not? They've had an incredible series. And here's the kill again. I love the power of evil. It uses the ultimate first. This puts so many orbs on the ground. It makes it so you cannot miss your scatter of the week. Ensuring that ensures the kill. Confident play there from power of evil. And while we talked about how Misfits struggle to force a fight onto SKT because of time control, well, it also means SKT can't really play aggressive with this four-man group. They're trying to peel Misfits away from the Baron here, and Wolf will stay alive during the fight. But they still lost Huni in that side lane. And that's another kill over to Misfits, and they can try and do the same thing again, because SKT's way of playing aggressive is through the split push, and they can't really find other ways. And as long as Han Sama can be kept safe with this three-man front line of Ignar, Maxlor, and Alfari, he is going for an exceptionally high DPS build. He's building towards that IE, and when he has that completed with the Rage Blade, your auto attack damage is absurd, but you need to be kept safe. You don't have the buffer of a defensive item. You don't have the buffer of that Arden Sensor support or the Lifesteal. Such a breakout tournament from Han Sama. In the EU LCS, people always look at Sven and Reckless. Han Sama was like the new guy who came in, but he couldn't really step up and beat these two guys. During Worlds, though, he's been one of the best performing players on Misfits, and he's one of the main reasons they're sitting here in a game five against SKT. It's an amazing thing you're seeing from both Han Sama and Ignar on the same page all the time. And even when it was the Triss for Han Sama and Ignar was a few steps behind, they were still going in with that confidence. Talisman of Ascension towards the mid lane, just kind of flexing their muscles to see if they could get a good hook in as Power of Evil was rotating up slowly. Power of Evil is going to be so important in this game. Already three kills. He has a lot of farm. He's at such a strong point on Cinder that he's going to force itemization to be changed. He needs to force out things from Bang, like a Hex Drinker or a QSS. And this third Infernal wow. is enormous if Misfits can get it. We'll see if they can navigate this fight. For now, it looks like SKT is not on the way, but Misfits is a little bit spread out. Blank focusing towards the mid side. It's going to be a shock blast yeah. from Huni to see if he can grab it. How far he stands in front and three Infernal Drakes going to Misfits. SKT are so passive, they are so slow in their shot calling, but now they're trying to change that, they're rushing the Baron. See how fast they can rush it down. You have Maxlor just on the side. He has Ignar as well for safety to get out of this. Pushed away by Faker, and it looks like that's gonna be enough for them. Baron wasn't even down to half. This is so good from Misfits, grabbing that Infernal. Three Infernal advantages, just absurd. It's such a low percentage win game, generally, when you give over that combination of Drakes to your opponents. And 
You said they're playing passive, Martin. I think SKT is playing scared. They look like a team that is trying to play not to lose game five against a team that was never supposed to challenge them, that was never supposed to be this close to moving on to the semifinals. And for the first time, it almost feels like they're playing as if they are the underdog. They are playing like a team who's just waiting for a mistake from the other team. But Misfits not making any mistakes right now. Power of Evils moves down to the bot lane to kill. Huni was perfect. The setups around Infernal Drake's been spot on as well, and they react instantly to that Baron being started. So right now, SKT, with their very defensive four-man group, led by Wolfman this time, Kench, are still just sitting and hoping that Misfits will mess something up. But it's not happened just yet. We're still looking at now Triple Infernal. Baron Vision is the next thing we're looking at once again. And Misfits can just start the Baron and force a fight. When I, when I talk about Syndra, I like to talk about damage thresholds a lot of the time. Hitting enough damage that you can essentially one combo your opponent. And if you can reach that, you're so ridiculously powerful. We have a third item death cap and triple infernal. Power of Evil is over 500 AP at 30 minutes into the game. If he lands a combo onto Bang, Bang could just die from full. And despite the fact that there's a Banshee's Veil on Faker, so could he. Honestly, we shouldn't even be surprised that SKT are just waiting for a mistake. It's what they did in groups in so many games. They were waiting for teams to mess up around Baron, around team fights. Now Baron here is being started. Uni's teleport is down. Now Fari Stand United is down, but teleport is up. Power of Evil taking a lot of damage. Buster Shot's gonna get him over the wall, but I don't think Explosive takes him out as he still gets the heal from Han Sama, the team working together. But Uni not in the fight. SK St SKT is still able to stop Baron. Both summoners down on both mid laners. They get out barely. And this could mean SKT can clear out all the vision, can reset a little bit. And there is a global coming back up for Alfari, so they still will have that advantage and could look to force once again. But that was such a big one from SKT. 4v5, yeah. they managed to stop Misfits from getting the Baron, and they didn't even lose a single member. Faker cleansed Flash down, but he did use it to stay alive. And once again, Misfits do not want to risk Blank stealing this Baron. They keep peeling off and look for the fight, but they can't get onto the correct target. They're playing smart. They're playing intelligently and they're playing confidently. And you have to think if they could go back to the Baron now, if they can start up the Baron with Huni having no teleport, them having the Stand United available and no summoners on Faker, flash down on Wolf, that with the flash up here on Elfari, with the flash available on Ignar, you could make something happen. But we know that SKT needs just one team fight in their favor. They get the Baron. Suddenly they get a massive gold lead and they are in full control, but they have to be able to win this fight first. And this is the play from, from Misfits, despite the risk. This is the intelligent play. This is what they should be yes. looking to do. And you need to play around that. You can't give your opponents too much credit. You have to do what is the smart play if you're playing against G2, if you're playing against Fnatic, no matter who you are playing, look for that. Both team teams charged up in that tempo, looking for something on the map. And it's Misfits trying to play on their clock, making Ooh. SKT walk to the beat of that drum. Baker might have to use his ulti out here in case Misfits are chasing towards him. Ignar is spotted by a ward, though, and he knows he's actually seen here. Oh, there could collapse. He gets to that passive, gets himself some movement speed, but still feels he needs the Weaver's Wall. This could prompt them to start the pair, and Faker does not have the ultimate to actually disrupt that. But they're still playing it somewhat defensive. Not sure if they want to commit to it. And Honey is closing in on the top side. He's going to be looking for that turret. He does have his teleport back critically now. So it would be a 5v5 if the Misfits look for it. Kind of missed their window. Ooh. Maxlor taking quite a bit up to the team now to defend this mid lane. But SKT should be able to get vision control more towards mid and the top side of the map here. This instantly now gives SKT to push in the mid lane while Huni still pushing in the bottom lane. He needs a few more waves to kill that tower. Misfits saw that jungler drop low. There's no Warmucks on Maxlow to get all the HP back instantly. And suddenly it's SKT in control. And Maxlow did not go back to base. He's actually staying around. So he's going to be much less effective in this next fight because he went for the Randuins instead of the Warmucks. He's stronger in an all in fight, but much weaker in these sort of skirmishy scenarios where he can get that Warmucks regen and come back. Still so crazy with a game five. Now dead even between the two teams SKT and Misfits. Winner moves into the semi-final. And PoE is looking for a kill here on Huni. Huni has no MR, he could get comboed. PoE already starting to throw down some orbs to get a little extra damage, but Huni is out very quick to keep himself safe, keeping both summoners as well, so he can continue in that bot lane.
Quick thinking right there. Great use of the Grump from Huni's side. Ignore is here to check. Baron's being started. He's getting jumped on. Flash over the wall. Communications there. The Shen ultimate coming down as Ignar flashes out, and that is a big deal. Ignar has to get back to base now before Huni can knock down this inhibitor turret, and they're going to be down. The Stand United SKT could be starting up this Baron. And we said, as he was looking for some mistakes, Huni oh, oh, oh. down immediately. So while Solo kill, power of evil. While the rest of Misfit's not been able to punish you over here, we got another fight. That's the fight. Cataclysm goes in. Ignar falls just as fast as Huni, and that's two 50-second timers on the clock. SKT is looking at Baron. Alfari can teleport in. And Misfits cannot afford to be out there when they have two members on the bot side. This is now flashed down they hold. on almost everyone. Hot Salman needs to be exceptionally careful. He's penned in here. No summoners. Figuring there would be vision. SKT just gives up time if they go to Baron. They want to keep their tempo up and try to keep the fight going. But Misfits collapse in the, collapse in the mid lane and now have a fight of their own. SKT takes another look as we have 20 and 14 seconds on both dead members. And this is teleport available now for Huni. No teleport on Afari. They're trying to force the issue. Look at Power Beaver. He's hiding in the brush here. There's no watch. He's stacking the balls as well. He wants to get the bang of Faker. Wolf's going to be there in the front. Scatter with those. So he's there a bit out of range. in there. He pulled these ones in. He gets That's it. Under Drake going over to Blade. And they're going to be heading towards the fight. Here comes Huni. Obliterates power of evil. He had no chance to get out. Han Sama falls, and that Misfits is heading for their base. Yeah, they're gonna lose a lot of kills here. This could be the Baron for SKT. Bang looking for one more. One more shot from Bang. Looks like Blink was gonna give him the range, but Rapid Fire comes back up and he finds it himself. Four down for Misfits. SKT takes control. And SKT, they sit back and they just wait and wait and wait, and then they find the openings. They are now pushing in for the inhib. They could actually look to end the game here. There's still a long time on these death timers. Alfari has not come back, and SKT, I think they're gonna do it. SKT, five games in, trying to avoid elimination, and they have done so. SK Telecom T1 will be your second team in the semifinals, claiming victory over Misfits Gaming. What a series between SKT and Misfits. What a game five as well. Low on kills. So many small fights happening, so many moves between the two teams, and SKT were just waiting for an opening. They were waiting for a mistake, and they found it in the end, and then they punish instantly. They even get the Elder Drake because Blank smites it. Misfits stepped away from parents, didn't want to risk 50-50s. Took it at the Elder Drake, and they lost it. Win that Elder Drake smite fight, and you win that team fight. Definitely agree, but they felt like they had to go for it because both the Globals were used at Alfari. Huni was going to have TP advantage, and I don't think they were willing to take that sort of a game where Huni could get in and chip down that inhibitor, where SKT could have map control because they are too good, and SKT wins again. Bowing to the crowd and heading back, thinking, how did this get to a game five as well? SKT, many more games to go within this world tournament, and many teams are now looking at them as vulnerable. Of course, but so much credit, credit over to Misfits. Like, what a performance in this series. So few people thought they could do anything against SKT. Game one was a complete stomp, 25 minutes in favor of SKT. And then they bounce back with these off-meta picks. We get Leona, we get Blitzcrank. They win two games in a row. And even in the slow games here, game four and five, they were so close to actually beating SKT. It was definitely not a late game, just purely in favor of the Korean team. It certainly wasn't. I mean, both games, really, they were one team fight away from being able to take the game. And the crowd loves them. A very well-deserved cheer coming from the crowd here in Guangzhou, China. And I'm sure all Misfits fans are very proud of this performance here at Worlds, from challenger to yeah. almost champion killers. I mean, you you can you you just have to love this team uh, after what they've showed during this tournament here. Everyone playing the same art and sense of support. They're changing it up. They're playing aggressive. They're forcing plays. They're never afraid of actually doing something on the map, and they take this game all the way to five. So they deserve all the all the love they're getting from the crowd and the fans. They certainly do, and you have to feel like the future is so bright for this team with a lot of young players who have not been together for that long. The improvement was there from week to week in Worlds, and they showed us a level that I never thought was possible from this team. And 
they can certainly walk away with their heads held high. Absolutely. To hear more about that win, let's send it over to the analyst desk. Thank you very much, Riv. Misfits Gaming inches away from completing the, the rather the biggest upset in the history of League of Legends, and yet SK Telecom showing composure around the Elder Dragon that can only be shown from a world championship team. They take the fight, they take the win, and they're moving on to the semifinals. Yeah, this was a huge risk for Misfits. They had lost so much of their global pressure and their support was in base, and such a close smite. Let's watch this. They both smite at 1,067 from the looks of it. And it was a flank teleport from of all people, Jace. Full damage, never even won a Hex Drinker. Gets in the back line, deletes Power of Evil, and that's when the sinking feeling begun for Misfits. And again, it's the vision control from SKT, the fact that they have the ability to look for the deep flanking plays like that. They find these pockets of Fog of War, and they punish you at the smallest instance. And you can see it on the faces of the Misfits players. That one will sting and will stick with them for a while as they were so close to unseating our two-time defending champion. And I know Azale and Deficio already said it, and we don't need to remind the audience at home or the audience here in the actual stadium that Misfits deserve to hold their heads up high, but I just want to reiterate, so many players take a step back. When they're looking down the barrel of Faker, when they're looking at SKT, they play safe. They go for the Rise pick, they go for the Orianna, they, they bundle up. Misfits said no. Power of Evil took a signature pick in Syndra. They threw away the Ardent Sensor with the Karma, and they put Ignor on his signature pick of Thresh. They said, you can do it, I believe in you, don't back down, press forward. Yeah, and they pushed SKT to their absolute limit. They don't get that giant upset, but they are right in that league with the other teams that have taken SKT to the limit. And that's a pretty elite crew. They put all of the cards on the table, Misfits did, but as you mentioned, Papa Smithy, a couple big plays in the end for SKT, the biggest of which, the flanking Jace. Speaking of which, Hooney standing by with Shocks for a quick interview. Let's head there now. Thank you very much, guys. I am here with Huni. It took blood, sweat, and tears. And Huni, when you come over here, you drop to your knees. How difficult was it? And did you expect it to be this difficult today? Uh, yeah, actually, the, currently we had uh, a lot of practice, uh, and it was not going well. So we actually expected it's gonna be a really hard game, but not as much as this. <laughs> but also, I hear that the Miss Face is really good at playing like just as a five, just as a team. And every line is like really decent. They know how to play around like power strikes. And also they're having like really nice uh, landing phase too. And yeah, there was a lot of like new composition. Like there was like something new pick, like Leona, like we didn't actually expect it. And also like there is like um, just hard game. Yeah, really hard game. Incredibly hard game. If you had to think of the biggest challenge today, would that then be in your own team, or would it be anything that Misfits threw at you? Um, yeah, it's like just for my uh, in my the prof professional player the in history. It's like was actually the hardest game I think. <laughs> and Misfits is like they're really good, and we need to practice more. You guys are still working towards that goal. You are working towards that all-important all goal of becoming the world champion. So what, what's up next? What are you going to do now to make sure that you are focused and that you are on point for that semifinal next week, Huni? Um, so of course, our goal, our, uh, my team goal is like just winning world championship. That's the, the right reason the SKT is here. And yeah, and so we got to practice really more and there is like we, we we actually learn a lot with with this uh, the quarterfinals. Actually, Misfits they 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 some point they're actually really better than us. So we actually learn a lot, and we gotta practice around that. All right. Well, thank you very much for giving us also an amazing series and for giving Misfits the respect in the end they deserve. Thank you very much, Huni. Congratulations, and now back over to you guys. Thank you, Shox. Huni talking about how difficult the day was for them, how unexpected some of the picks were and what they had to deal with. Another thing that was unexpected was the fact that the series even went to five games, Papa Smithy. When we look at the outset of the day, the way that this was set up, three O's across the board. Again, I'll remind everyone that 98% of Pickums had SKT moving through this best of five. And you know, 
predicting right, you know, saying, okay, SKT will take it. You think that will make me feel giddy, but I kind of feel a similar emotion to after the SKT Rock series last year, you know, fantastic five game series. People said it could have been the final, but of course the bracket didn't work out that way. And I kind of feel robbed because all I want after this series is to watch Misfits in another best of five to see their evolution here. SKT will go on. As, you, as was said by Hooney, they'll learn from the run, but it's amazing how you have these series where everything is new, just like that series. We had the support MF last year. Here we have the support pool just exploding to life with old and new. It just, I wish we could have more games. Suddenly, best of seven sounds like a go. <laughs> I don't know if I can handle another <laughs> two games of this series, Papa Smithy, but when we talk about what makes a world champion, right, it is about those high-pressure situations. It's about execution in the moment. And SKT is a roster full of people that have played in big moments, and they deliver every time. Yeah, and for Hooney, he's been on both sides of this, right? He was on that Fnatic team that took SKT to five games, at MSI in 2015, now he was the one who was able to come on the team at the very end. And SKT, even though it felt like they were slow to adapt in this series or that they didn't change from group stage, they pulled out Braum and Tom Kench in the midst of a best of five when everyone's been playing nothing but John Alulu and Rakan for two weeks of group stage. This team knows exactly how they have to adapt. You can push them to the absolute limit, but it is so hard to break that team. And it's also the fact that their individual performances, we talk about them being clutch players, the fact that they are making these small adaptations, that they're bending but they're not breaking. But then you look at Faker, who is just a solid rock. Even in SKT's losses, this guy proving that he is the best player in the world. And it seems small because it wasn't as flashy as we're used to seeing with Faker, but he was always there, never giving up, never giving them an inch. And let's not forget, opposing team has triple Infernal Drake. <laughs> SKT wins the fight around the Elder Dragon late game cool. to take the series. But when it all comes to bringing this match back, all of the SKT members stepped up. One person in particular, though, earned himself player of the series. No surprise, it's that man in the mid lane, the Demon King himself. It's Faker. I mean, in the victories especially, Faker was amazing. And this was what we saw from Faker in the LCK playoffs, taking out great teams like Samsung and KT at the time. When he needs to step up, this is why he's the best in the world, because everyone can have good games, but having important pivotal series when the team needs them to is becoming just the legacy of Faker. Yeah, he just did carry in a lot of those games. I have to double check on that one KDA in game five that we see on that graphic. Ooh. One player that I do want to talk about besides Faker on Misfit's side is Ignar. Yep. For bringing out Fervor Leona, Alistair, Thresh, and forcing SKT into a bunch of bands and forcing SKT into playing a completely different pool of supports. We don't hand out player of the series to losing teams, but if we did, I think Ignar would have a huge case for getting it in this series. Credit to him for putting Faker in a position where you could tell he was visibly rattled. Again, we were calling out after multiple games the look on his face for all of these SKT members. They were truly pushed to their limits today by the Misfit squad and were near elimination. They've squeaked through. Hooney's talking about it. They've got tons of work to do if their goal is to defend their title in two weeks' time. They still have a semi-final to get through. And the other guys on their bracket are people like Reckless, like Uzi. You know, the road actually really only gets harder from here. Yes, Ignar great, gave a great performance, but there are still plenty of very powerful bot lanes that are looking on the other side of this bracket. I just don't think you can fake innovation if you're the other teams in this bracket. If you see this match and ends up being standard on their side, that's one thing that SKT will love to opt in. They just want to go back to Ardent Sensor, long games, maybe some Twitch. They do not want to be dragged into what ended up being a bit of a mudslinging match with new picks coming again and again. So it's going to be very interesting to see how the next match goes and also the adaptation in a week. I actually think that's perfect for both Jezus and Ming. Ming actually has played Leona four times in the LPL. With this Nocturne, with, right? With Nocturne. So Fervor? Not Fervor. <laughs> <laughs> AD runes, though. And he plays it into Karma. And Jezus is also a huge playmaking play support in his own right. So like I said, it only gets harder for SKT. The Achilles heel has been exposed. They're still this magnificent warrior, but they can be taken down. And yeah, while we're on the topic, I mean, this just excites me for the continuation uh, you know, of the evolution of the meta here at Worlds because we thought it was all decided. And then, new, you know, and it just seems every day something new, something interesting yeah. comes out. And it, not only are we having to see adaptation within series, we're probably going to have to see adaptation for tomorrow's quarterfinals for whichever teams we're watching. Yeah, and I can't wait because the meta in the series that we saw on Thursday was much different than the meta we saw in this series, and I think it'll be much different on Saturday, Sunday, because everyone had to match 
what they're going to do about banning Janna and Lulu, and where does the meta go from there? Does it go straight to melees? Do you take the next tier of sensor support like Tarek? Because, I mean, Misfits jumps into that best of five yesterday. Who knows what kind of stuff they're going to be prepping because it's so individualized, the types of things you're doing. You're prepping just for your opponent in that game. And it's the best case scenario for the meta because we came into the tournament very quickly. It was like, okay, heal barrier, Arden sensor, long lanes, hyper carries. It was clear that was the strategy in scrims that was winning. It was also the least risk. So the Korean teams probably adopted it first. Everyone else took a note from that. There are playmaking tools. Teams tried it early. They shied away from it. The evolution of the meta is usually what beats this. And the Caitlyn was the start and into what we're seeing today. Every day is an individual meta. And that's when balance is looking good. And I can't wait for it to bleed over to the jungle position because the one thing that's remained true is still Sejuani's reigning dominance yeah. over these two quarterfinals. But the thing is, we have contracts. Cloud9 and WE at the very bookend of this week. And that's when things get very <laughs> exciting for how you're going to break and change that tank jungle meta. We have to. We talk about the meta. Let's talk to the man who has to adapt to the meta for SKT. Shox is standing by with the head coach, Koma. Thank you guys, I'm also standing by with the coach Koma after SKT got pushed harder than they ever have in a quarter final, but still managed to make it out. What would you say was the most difficult to overcome today, Koma? 우선 8강에서 승리를 축하드리고요. SKT 여태 모든 롤드컵 다 통틀어서 가장 고전했던 8강이 아닌가 싶은데요. 오늘 가장 어려웠던 부분이 무엇이 있었을까요? 어, 오늘 가장 좀 어려웠었던 부분은 좀 라인전에서 좀 실수가 많이 나온 것 같아가지고 좀 그런 부분 때문에 많이 고전한 것 같습니다. 특히 좀 어, 바텀 라인전에서 좀 실수가 덜 나왔으면 좋았는데 그 부분에서 좀 많이 흔들렸던 것 같아요. So I think the most difficult part was at the lane phase. There are a lot of mistakes that we should have made. And I think definitely the game should have been better if our bot lane had made some less mistakes and played it just a bit better. Mm -hmm. uh, I talked to Huni before. He had a lot of praise for the Misfits team who were absolute underdogs today. What can you say to the play of your opponents today? Huni 선수가 이전 인터뷰에서 상대편인 Misfits 팀을 매우 많이 칭찬하고 정말 좋은 팀을 얘기했었는데요. 코치님은 Misfits 전 팀에서 어떻게 생각하시는지 궁금합니다. 어, 일단은 오늘 경기도 이렇고 뭐 지난 경기들 보면은 굉장히 잘한다고 생각하고요. 각 라이너별로도 진짜 기량이 되게 뛰어나서 앞으로 많이 좀 기대되는 팀인 것 같아요. So like just looking at today's game, I think it's pretty obvious that they're a really talented team. Like all their players, they have a lot of potential and a lot of talent in them. So I think we can see a lot more of Misfits in the future tournaments to come. But it's SKT that we'll be looking at going forward, triumphing here again today. Thank you very much, Koma. Congratulations back over to you guys. Thank you very much, Shox. And as we continue to talk about the journey that's ahead of SK Telecom, if they intend to defend their title, I want to ask you guys about any holes that we saw today. I mean, there definitely were some. But coming into the day, right, we, there were questions. Do you take them late? Do you go early and try and... Misfits showed us that you know, throughout the day, they could stack up against SKT in multiple ways. So is there only one solution? Are there multiple? What are our thoughts here? You just recognize that they're not unkillable, that gods do bleed, and that you can write in blood. Like, you just play your game. That's what Misfits did. Yeah, people can break it down stylistically, like, oh, Misfits are early game. So you play early game against SKT. That's what EDG did. That's what worked. Uh, at the heart and soul of it, Misfits just played what they were comfortable with. They weren't afraid that it was SKT, and I think that's the most important thing here. Yeah, and when I look at SKT, a lot of times I like to think they're the Borg because you'll throw something at them, then they'll adapt and never lose to that thing again. And I think that almost happened in this series where Misfits was playing around bottom sign absurdly so, a 28% jungle proximity for Maxlore in that Game 3 victory. But they had the perfect answer. First picking the Tristana and then locking in the Tom Kench in that fifth game was a completely perfect answer to Misfits' entire strategy for the series. So the fact that they came up with that on the fly when no one was playing like that is extremely impressive. But the fact that they're even in that position makes it a genuine conversation of how do you actually attack SKT in series. I mean, we talk about conversations and Prey also stepping up this year and people saying, okay, consensus best AD carry. It was also about duo lanes and Bang and Wolf had some mares, had some down performances both today and also in the LCK. So seeing that bleed over, playing around bot lane is possible. And a small point also, Peanut had a, a weak series again. I still think he starts the next, next best of five for that information advantage, but... Outside of that, that's really all you're getting out of Peanut at this tournament. Play your own game, play around bot lane. The man who embodied that was Ignar himself. He's standing by with shocks for a word. Let's go there now.
Thank you guys. I'm also standing right here uh, with Ignar, who I realize this must be a very difficult moment for as well. So first off, Ignar, I just want to give the floor to you and let you speak on whatever you want about what happened today. Uh, today we lose against SKT. It was really close to win, but I feel really happy because our team grow up really, really slow. Like our team was like second second league, but we come world and we meet SKT and it was close, but almost win. So it's really, really thank you for all of all parts of Miss Peace. You say you got really close to it. You, Ignar, played a phenomenal role actually throughout the groups as well. And now you pick Leona with Fever of Battle. You pick Alistar. You go in all the time. Uh, where did the decision come from to make these bold choices? And how come you were so confident against that SKT bottom lane? Uh, mm, people days, people against SKT days, I thought uh, maybe we can't win against SKT with normal way. So I want to try my full competence champions, so it was like engaged champions because I'm, I have really a lot of competence on engage. And then our assistant coach, which name is Hiba, Hiba told me about Fever Leona and I tried it already a few times and it was really, really good. So I tried to use today and it was success. It was fantastic. Uh, you say you're already very happy. Um, can you kind of look back on the whole year? What would be your best memory or what would be your best thing to think about going forward with this team? Because it's only the beginning. Mm. Was, I don't know. With this team, always like update, like update with best memory because our team was second series and we go first, first league. It was best best time at that moment. But after then, we go like we place at four, it was really good. And then next season we, we get second place and it was good again. So now is, I don't know, it's world. So I don't know, it's keep updating. So it's really happy, yeah. You kept going up, so next year world champion? I was just, I, yeah, yeah, maybe, yeah. Just a bit of a joke, but thank you very much for talking to us, Ignar. Congratulations, you have made the uh, entire European LCS and a lot of fans around the world very happy with a great series. Thank you very much. All right, back over to you guys. Thank you, Shox. From Challenger to World's quarterfinals, pushing SK Telecom to game five. That's a pretty damn good resume for just one year out in the field. That's a big point. I mean, he had a career in Korea. Of course, he was on, ironically, what is now Longju. So it's a bit of a down week for them. But uh, making his name, his English clearly is, is on point as well. I had heard about that before. He's making s such a star-making performance. The Alistair sneak into the back of the oh. top turret where he evaded vision. Some Metal Gear Solid stuff there. He's a star. Well, as we put a close on today's series, let's go ahead and pull up the bracket to close out our day. Tomorrow, Fnatic faces off against RNG to decide who takes on SKT in that semifinal matchup. Quick thoughts on how that matchup might break down. I mean, it's a rematch from the 2013 semifinals, I believe, Fnatic versus RNG, and it's Reckless and Uzi again looking across from each other. Uh, European Wei Xiao versus the dude who took over Wei Xiao's throne. I mean, the importance of the bot lane, bot lane, right? We've seen it in the last two series could become very big here, but that's where you'd look at RNG's performance from the group stage and say, they're definitely favorites. Oh yeah, I'm so excited for these matchups. The fireworks we got to see in the first oh. two days, Longju versus Samsung, the way SKT versus Misfits comes out, you expect RNG to be the favorites, you expect WE to be the favorites, but I don't know who's going to win. I don't well, know anymore either. And I just expect a new lease on the meta. I don't think we're gonna get anything we've seen in the last two years. Maybe the greatest hits of it, but new stuff as well. I'm going to be off the broadcast tomorrow just furiously taking notes and trying to make sense of this week of quarterfinals and predict the future. It's almost like the players aren't sure of it just yet. More fireworks tomorrow, but for now, myself, the casters, the entire live brass broadcast crew, thank you for watching and stay tuned for Worlds Tonight where Crumbs, Quickshot, and Kobe will go over the day's games and look towards the rest of quarterfinals. Otherwise, meet us back here tomorrow for more Worlds 2017. Good night. Legends never die when the world is calling you Legends never die. About to be onto the rift. Our second quarterfinal matchup. SK Telecom T1 versus Misfits Gaming. Talk comes in after the flash. They get turret side and they're gonna get first blood. Big 
Tiger knows he can come in how far he tries to get just away from the turret, dodging out on the top, but knocked back in. And Baker picks up kill number two. They turn out to Alpha. No equalizer. Damage from the equalizer comes in as Bang goes over the wall to take the 1v1. Legends never die. Legends never die. Go back, go back, go back. Doggy's moving button. I go, I go, I go. Okay, you get him and get up. Fine, fine. Doggy's moving button. Nice. 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 The cleanse comes out. Oh, oh, yes, oh, oh, Taken down before Cosmic Radiance. Oh, oh Baker fight. pulled straight from the Valkyries. It's my birthday. I'm going to grab some kills. And that's going to be a pickup for Han Sama. The Nexus is going to be open. And Misfits are going to find the victory in game two over SK Telecom T1. Okay, I'm okay. Gungde, Gungde, Wawa. Wawa, this is good. Good, 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 good. Ikyo. And here comes SKT right on top of Misfits. The damage is just too much. And SKT take the game. Here comes Hootie. Obliterates power of evil. He had no chance to get out. Han Sama falls. And that Misfits is heading to their base. SK Telecom T1 will be your second team in the semifinals. Play